Education is a right. To choose the right path to take. Let's take a look at someone who, as a child, wanted to become a journalist. But after getting recognized as a young scientist, took the path to becoming one of the country's best biochemists and one of the top educators in the Philippines. Let's sit in and learn from Dr. Del Fierro. Mabuhi ka subuanun! Dr. Ramon Suan Del Fierro, currently the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences of the University of San Carlos, a professor par excellence, is a source of pride and inspiration to his colleagues in the teaching profession and the Cebuano people. Dr. Del Fierro was awarded as one of the outstanding teachers of the Philippines by the Metrobank Foundation and was also cited as an outstanding educator by the Philippine Senate and the House of Representatives. A biochemistry expert, Dr. Del Fierro has conducted scientific researches on the biochemical potentials of natural products and on chemical toxicology in the environment. He is a research fellow and UNESCO fellow in prestigious universities in Japan. His profound commitment to excellence in education has led him to take a role in the institutionalization of the CHED Higher Education Development Program and in making the Chemistry Department of USC a CHED Center of Excellence. Dr. Ramon Del Fierro is not only a professor, he is a leader in the academe whose works and continued drive for excellence are indeed worth emulating for his outstanding achievements and excellence as an educator his exemplary competence and remarkable dedication to the promotion and development of higher education in Cebu. He is a source of pride and inspiration to the teaching profession. One of the most exciting and at the same time noted celebrated educators in the country we have with us today, Dr. Ramon Del Fierro. It is a pleasure to have you with us here today, sir. Thank you very much. Dean, you're an exemplary educator cited um, by numerous organizations, as a matter of fact, and at the same time, a top biochemist in your own right. We need to find out, I need to learn, where did this come from? When, when you were a child, let's start off with that. When you were a child, what, what did you want to become? What was your inspiration? Well, actually, when I was still in high school, I had several interests, one of which was uh, I wanted to become a journalist. A journalist? Yeah. And then I also, I was very much involved into, because I was very much involved, involved with paper publications. And then I was also a book club member. And I was also into the Rondalia. So I was a member of the school Rondalia then. So you're very active extracurricularly. Well, I was involved in so many uh, organizations then when I was still in high school. However, um, I was also involved in the science club. What, what particular instance made you choose the path of science? Well, there was this science fair sponsored by the uh, Science Foundation of the Philippines, then under the National Science Development Board. They conduct yearly science fairs and quizzes. And during that time, uh, our science teachers, especially in biology and chemistry and physics, they wanted us to make some research projects. And then I happened to be to be, uh, to be interested in uh, creating certain projects. So that was then, during that time in second year, I uh, conducted an investigatory project on sea urchins. When, while you were in, high, in second year high school? Yeah, second year high school. So even as, as young as that, you were already into doing research? On the very yes, during that time it was research already. But how did you get, well you had very active extracurricular interest. What made you choose biochemistry? Oh, well, biochemistry is a branch of uh, chemistry. But then, I mean, why not medicine or why not geology? I mean, well, I'm, I like chemistry a lot. Yeah. And um, biochemistry is part of organic chemistry, but in fact now it's uh, really a branch of uh, chemistry. And it has uh, more of the applications. So if you look at biomolecules, 
Well, it's more interesting compared to just studying just uh, basically mathematical concepts of chemistry. How did the teaching come in? I mean, as a you you finished as a, as a chemist, you, you and then you delved into biochemistry as a field, but how did the teaching come in? Well, actually, when I finished uh, my college degree, that's BS Chemistry at the University of San Carlos, I then uh, applied for a teaching post. During that time, luckily, there was a vacant position, so I was taken in. And uh, being a young instructor then, so I thought of really venturing into the academic field already. So uh, the university at that early stage has recognized probably my interest in the academe. So they sent me for graduate school. So I took up, yeah, I took up a master's in biochemistry then. And during that time, there were no biochemists in Cebu. So I was looking into a field of chemistry wherein when I finish and get that particular degree, I would be probably uh, a recognized expert then. One of the first, probably, yes. Indeed, in Cebu. Um, uh, you, you are definitely a noted biochemist, but at the same time, a top educator. You've been, you've been recognized as a top educator in the country. What is your style in teaching that has brought you to this esteemed presence? Well, um, as a teacher, I would probably venture into transformative learning in which we don't only give concepts that they just memorize or just internalize by themselves. We want them to really be able to uh, transform what they learn as concepts into outcomes based. So right now the recent trend is out outcomes based education. So then when I uh, really went into my teaching career, I wanted not only just to give lectures and lectures and lectures every time, but I want to give transformative learning to the students. So we would demonstrate certain concepts. For example, when we look at a molecule or we, we discuss a molecule in chemistry, for example, we don't just write the formula, but we give them an idea how the molecule could probably uh, rotate, for example, or how a molecule could possibly uh, move, if it moves, perhaps. And in terms of biochemical concepts, we want them to be able to internalize that molecules, once they break down, it would result into certain products which could be either substances which would be responsible for growth and development of a person or organism or it could possibly uh, give certain uh, hazardous effects. Uh, well, Dean, going back, as an educator, I have, I have one question. What is your opinion on, on the K-12 situation, adding two years in high school to better the Philippine educational system? Do you think that's a, that's a needed requirement for Filipinos now? Well, actually, globally, the educational system is basically 16 years. So that is uh, kindergarten plus 12 years of basic education, and then plus additional higher education. But in the Philippines, in fact, in the past, kindergarten is not uh, required. So we have six years of elementary and four years of high school. So that means 10 years plus four years of college. So when our students graduate from high school, they're basically only 14, 15, or 16 years old. I, for one, when I finished my high school, I finished at the age of 15. So when I entered college, I was, well, in terms of emotional maturity, probably I could say during that time I was still uh, emotionally immature, just like our students now. No? So these kind of students probably would not be able to concentrate so much uh, in their academic life in college. So, in most countries, or it's basically only two countries left now, including the Philippines, no, which does not adopt the K plus 12 system, we are actually answering to the global educational mandate that we should have the K plus 12 in terms of basic education and that the Philippines should follow suit. What can you advise to those students who shift courses, those who choose and change? How can they best choose what course to take? 
it is important that even when you are in high school still, that you have already the interest to pursue a particular program because it would be to the disadvantage of a student once they enter college that they, are, they haven't decided yet. You have to know what you want to be. Correct. And that's very important, no? Well, uh, currently, students would take programs which are being mandated by their parents or by their peers or what is the current trend now. So like, for example, in a few years back, nursing was a very uh, priority for all the parents because it was the demand of the international market. However, nursing now is not uh, that uh, the demand. It's also the pressure of the family because the family would say, oh, you take this course because it's, you're employable abroad. That's always our, uh, the notion of parents. It's always financial rewards. But not in, take into consideration, for example, a student even if his aptitude, his or her aptitude is not fit for the, the nursing profession, is forced to take the nursing profession because the parents demand it or will be. So what happens is there are a lot of nurses probably could not be able to become good nurse, for example. What do you, what do you think about the, the, the idea that people want to go abroad because that's where fruits and, and that's where they can get most of their bounty. How, how, do, you, how do you see that? Thing? Well, actually, that always depends on what people would value. No? So like, for example, of course, you cannot deny a family who wants to become financially prosperous, perhaps, and the only way to become financially prosperous would be to go abroad. Well, it's a pity that that's the only way that we could probably be able to satisfy our objective because we think that no matter how prob probably we uh, work hard here, but they think that they could not possibly be able to earn as much, no? Whereas when you go abroad, you can easily get the returns or the ROI, return of investment of your education. But it really depends on the family. I'll be direct. Why are you still here in the Philippines as a biochemist? I mean, you've, you've researched and learned and taught in different, numerous places around the world. What has made you stay in the Philippines? Well, when I went abroad for my education, say, with my doctorate degree, well, I really was bent on after finishing my uh, biochemistry degree abroad, I would really practice in the Philippines and that was my intention. There was also this kind of pulling effect in my home province, no, Cebu. So um, probably also the fact that because of family support that did not drive me out of the country, that could be a major factor too. Especially with the field that you're in, which uh, steadily advances all the time. Mm -hmm. you, you do have that curious notion of what lies beyond. Mm -hmm. But it is, uh, like, I, I, I see you as a new generation illustrado, a la Jose Rizal, you know, who, who goes out and, and studies um, uh, whatever knowledge that they can to par partake so that they can bring it back to the Philippines. And I, that's what I said right from the start. That's why we thank you, Dean, for still being here. How do you maintain, as a, as a dean and as an educator, how do you maintain the, the top, the, your, your standard as a top-notch university, especially with these, uh, these factors coming in? How do you handle brain drain? Well, we cannot really 100% control it. But to be able to have continuous supply of uh, uh, high-profile educators, especially in the University of San Carlos, what we do is we always send, we, we are still confident that uh, we send people uh, outside of Cebu to be able to get their uh, advanced degrees, even outside of the country, with the hope that they will come. But before sending them, just as I was also uh, being, um, let's say, um, told that you are to be sent outside, the purpose of which is to come back and also share what you have learned outside. So I also take note of that, that whenever I recommend or um, <clears throat> send people either even outside of Cebu 
to take up their education, like for example, in uh, prestigious universities in Manila, La Salle, Ateneo, UP, UST, we always tell them that you are sent to further your knowledge in the hope that you should come back and share it with our students here in the University of San Carlos. Not that you are sent to get an advanced degree to be able to be employed outside of the University of San Carlos. Now, oh, Dean, just to break the ice a bit, I have, I have eight questions for you. Now, I'd like you, these are mostly best questions. Unsay, unsay mga makonsider ni mo for you as a person that is best for you. I, I hope that you can answer it as precisely as you can. So, okay, from the top of your head, what is your best teaching tool? My brain. <laughs> well, for your brain, of course. Best spot to relax and gather your thoughts? In my office. In your office. Wait, is there a specific area? Well, my chair, comfortable yeah, chair, comfortable in, chair in my office because I could see from f far distance that I could possibly like, sort of, it relaxes me. Best life lesson? Prudence. Prudence? How so? You have to be prudent in, what, in how you're going to say something. You have to be prudent on how you're going to think. And you have to be prudent on how you're going to act. Sir, what is the best example of biochemistry and application? Now, I have, I'm of course in the stage where, in, you know, getting older, so <laughs> our mechanisms in life tends to uh, deteriorate already. So, you know, disorders would always develop. So right now, uh, I want an application of biochemistry into my system. Basically, like for example, developing medicinals. So like uh, hypoglycemic agents, analgesics, those things. Very good. Best plant. Best plant. Well, I love plants actually, so I could not qualify only one plant, so several of them. Well, best food to eat. Well, in Cebu, what's famous is lechon. Lechon, good job. Best place in Cebu to go to. First is my house. Second, of course, um, I don't always forget to go uh, to a church. Last question, best song to hum along? Actually, I don't have any particular uh, best song, but what I like would be jazz music, love songs, mm -hmm. country music. Oh, finally, Dean, my final question. Your term as Dean ends this May. Yes. What more do you want to achieve? What more do I want to achieve? Well, actually, right now is that I want to improve the faculty profile of the college as well as the kind of uh, curricular programs and the quality of the courses that we are actually crafting should be maintained. So I hope that should uh, my term ends already, that could be the legacy that I could give the college that at least I have contributed to the improvement perhaps of the programs that we have made with the service courses or the curricular programs that we have offered and the quality of our teaching force. I also have to ask, as a Garbo Susubo awardee, how does it feel to keep teaching in Cebu and at the same time for having your efforts as an individual recognized. For every award that is given by an award giving body, that is there's always a corresponding responsibility that you have to fulfill. When a person is being um, honored, that means it's not only honored just because it is only for that particular award, but you have also to give back and that is a responsibility that you have to uphold. So I think um, being an awardee of uh, an Garbo Sasubo, I would say that it was an honor for me to return back to my fellow Cebuanos, that uh, I could possibly be able to contribute to the Cebuanos. And that's what you're doing. Yes. So, ako maingon good. You are, are definitely the one of the best examples of that that the, the young ones can learn from in terms of choosing what you want to be. Mm -hmm being who you want to be 
and excelling at who you are. Mo nang din, mabuhi ka. Salamat kayo. Salamat kayo. Thank you for having us. Today, we look not only where we need to get better at, but where we already excel in. The Cebuano spirit finds excellence amidst mediocrity. And Dr. Ramon Del Fiero reminds us to always be prudent. And despite the many different factors, we must never forget our moral responsibility. And in the field of knowledge, we must always be insatiable. Ako si Paolo Varela, mabuhi ka subuanun.